Well, good morning, folks. It's 5.58 a.m. and here is today's European Union news update from the UK. Secret plans are being drawn up to kick Greece out of the Eurozone and the transatlantic trade partnership. Is it time for action? Why do British politicians find it so hard to talk about the EU? And is the world safe in the hands of the High Representative? Plus, don't forget about our free ebook, Democracy in a Federalised Europe. Now, I'm Rick Timmis, and I'm returning once again to provide these videos for you, which I'll be trying to provide early in the morning. Uh, hopefully, they'll come out on a daily basis, but I have limited time to be able to apply to this. So that means that um, if one doesn't get finished in the time allotted on uh, day one, then what I'll do is I'll finish the production on day two and ship it then. So you might find occasionally where the news is, takes too long to get through, for example, that, um, that I'll skip a day so that the video gets edited and put together the following day. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, get straight into it and see, uh, see what's going on in the news. Eurozone countries are formulating plans to boot Greece out of the single currency as expectation grows that Athens may default on its debts next month. A memo which was put together by the Finnish finance ministry, a close Berlin ally, talks of very difficult political decisions as the currency bloc braces itself for Greece's crash flow to ossify, according to the Times Online, that is. Well, this is about who gets the impetus. Will Greece show that life, trade, jobs and prosperity exist? exists outside the Eurozone, or will the kleptocrats try to steal the march by kicking them out first? It's going to get interesting. Now, time for action on the transatlantic trade investment partnership. Now, despite negligible coverage in the mainstream media, the transatlantic trade and investment partnership has become one of the hottest topics for activist circles today. The prospect of sacrificing our most cherished labour, social and environmental rights on the altar of free market fundamentalism has inspired an unprecedented movement of resistance from millions of European citizens. Now, what we'd say on this is this is an almost exact copy from the playbook for a new world order, and indeed is precisely the modus operandi that was undertaken by our own British politicians back in the late 1960s. Check out our video on this YouTube channel or on our website, theunituk.com. The video is called Betrayed, and uh, take a look at that for full details of how it gets done. Now, story three, as the general election rolls around into its final phase, it's worth observing one of the great paradoxes of British political life. On the one hand, everyone says that Europe is an important issue and that we must debate it. But on the other hand, nobody ever seems to actually have that debate. Do you smell a rat yet? Well, when it comes to Europe, it's vital to our economy and trade, apparently. But when it comes to governance, it's got little or no role to play. Well, that's what they tell us anyway. Well... Leastways, that's what our politicians like us to think. Of course, it's rubbish. Even the plain packaging of cigarettes and insurance for ride-on lawnmowers are all EU directives. These unelected, the, un, the unelected commission writes almost all the laws of the member states. It's a cabal, my friends. Come and take a look at our website or subscribe here. Subscribe here and we'll show you. Is the world safe in the hands of the high representative? So this editorial today on our site, like her predecessor, Baroness Ashton, Mongerini's career has been based on her personal ideology rather than any experience as a diplomat. Ashton had no experience in government and came to prominence due to her support of the CND movement. Mogherini has limited experience in government, most notably as a diplomatic minister in the Renzi government in Italy for a period of just seven months, but she too came to prominence mainly for her activity within her own ideology. She was a member of the Italian Communist Party. Now... Why do the closing words from our documentary Betrayed come to mind here? Ex-Soviet political activist explaining how the EU is the old Soviet system in Western guise. In his closing words, he said, I have lived in your future and it didn't work.
Now, don't forget about the free ebook Democracy in a Federalized Europe, which you can download on the homepage of our website. Basically, the book is a series of short chapters describing the very real potential for how the British and other European peoples will be subject to democracy under European law in a formalized European state if the UK should be foolish enough to embark on such an exercise. It's written from the perspective of the ordinary man on the street. So, um I hope you like the new format. This gives me some speed and ability to put things together quickly, which is what I need because I'm very tight for time, but I do want to keep this news coming for you and keep this channel alive and keep promoting the website. Um, so do subscribe here um, because uh, that really motivates us and me to produce this material for you if we know that if I know that there are people out there that are watching it. Um, so I'll sign off and leave you with the credits from our old video and uh, I'll see you next time.